One of Australia's proudest and biggest sporting clubs has a systemic racism problem. That's according to the Do Better Review leaked this week. It found Collingwood's racism over decades has been distinct and egregious. That's today on The Ticket. Shortly, we'll hear from former Gold Coast Suns player Joel Wilkinson, who's fought a decade-long campaign against the racism he suffered as a professional AFL player, as well as employment law expert Josh Bornstein. But first, let's lay out how we got here. The Do Better report was leaked this week with damning findings against the club. The president of 22 years came under fire for calling it a good day. This is an historic and proud day for the Collingwood Football Club. The next day, he backtracked. I got it wrong. I said it was a proud day for Collingwood, and I shouldn't have. It's not the first time he's apologised. Back in 2013, he suggested Indigenous player Adam Goods could play the role of King Kong. Get Adam Goods down for it, do you reckon? No, I no? thought so. <laughs> or you, absolutely no. <laughs> you, you can see them doing it, can't you? And it was just something that came out, wasn't even thinking it, wasn't trying to promulgate it, wasn't trying to be a smart aleck. The vilified player who sparked the review, Heritia Lamumba, is still waiting for one of Eddie's apologies. What's been clear with the Collingwood Football Club is that it refuses to look back in its past. Despite international coverage of the review demanding Collingwood do better, it seems to be business as usual. Eddie Maguire refused to step down despite a chorus of criticism and he retains the support of the sports CEO, Gillan McLaughlin. I know from the conversation I had with her that he's committed to taking the club forward. And the state's premier, Dan Andrews. You've got to acknowledge these things first before you can ever hope to put, to put a plan in place. And even the Federal Minister for Indigenous Australians, Ken Wyatt. So that wherever he ends up in his lifetime, then he's in a position to say, look, when I was at Collingwood, this was not appropriate. It was Collingwood's 150 footballers and netballers who said what the President wouldn't. The letter simply starts, sorry. It goes on to acknowledge the club's history and promises to bring about change. But for the victims of racial abuse, nothing changes. He's had his chances. You know, he's the leader of, of the club. Like he's the, he's the one who puts people in place and he creates the culture. When it comes to racial discrimination and racism, the Collingwood Football Club has not stood up for the downtrodden. Here are the club's four major commercial partners. CGU did not return the ABC's calls. Neither did Latrobe Financial. Emirates offered this, saying the company condemns racism and discrimination and are pleased that Collingwood Football Club are proactively adopting changes. And Nike, who championed the Take a Knee movement made famous by Colin Kaepernick and their support of Black Lives Matter, has adopted a much beiger approach in Australia, offering this statement. Nike stands against racism and discrimination in any form and believes in the power of sport to create an equal playing field for all. We await Collingwood's implementation of their strategy and action plan as a result of the Do Better report. But some Collingwood fans are demanding change now. Honestly, it's, it's, it's time for Eddie to, to, to walk away. For now, Eddie Maguire, the man prone to making gaffes, retains his position, while the vilified player who sparked the review, Heritia Lamumba, is still waiting for one of Eddie's apologies. Joining me now is former AFL player Joel Wilkinson and principal at Morris Blackburn, Josh Bornstein. Thank you both for your time today. Joel, I'll start with you. At the end of this week, what has changed for players like you who have suffered racism during your time at the AFL? Well, uh, as you can see, um, coming off that report, which is just one year, uh, it's a m many culminations of uh, racism and uh, another confirmation that there has been racial abuse that has been occurring in the AFL. And, yeah, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed for 10 years for myself. I know for many black players it hasn't changed. And we've now got to start looking at uh, what punishment is going to occur regarding this. Um, this has co confirmed that there is liability on Collingwood, there is liability on the AFL, but 
uh, disturbingly, there's just been nothing other than that it's in the past. And those references are very problematic, uh, very dangerous that you can sort of refer that racism being uh, distant or in the past means that you can get away with this high level of abuse. So again, um, it seems that there's a lot of branding, there's a lot of manipulation, uh, no accountability. And I think that comes from a conflict of interest within the AFL, who are on the boards of these football clubs. Uh, I was in a lawsuit, and out of that lawsuit, there was eight teams that are sued. And of those teams, there's over 25 lawyers, barristers, and Supreme Court judges who are on the boards of those football clubs. And uh, it seems that a lot of these people are interconnected and don't want to go forward with um, punishment or sanctions, clearly sanctions, and then this is a criminal act, so further consequence. Yeah, consequence, I think, um, is the strongest word that emanates out of this. Josh, racism is illegal. We know that. Uh, we have this report saying Collingwood uh, has a long history of systemic racism. It's distinct and egregious, and yet there have not been any consequences, have there? Why not? Um, it's a very good question, I think, because within the organisation, racism has been accepted or at least accepted to the point where uh, racist behaviour has not been sanctioned or punished. Um, people have not been made accountable and that's because the report, as the report says, it's a deep-seated problem, it's a structural problem, it's a long-standing problem. At any time, any player who is subjected to racism, any professional footballer or professional sports person can take action. But like any person who is a whistleblower, if you like, who disturbs the prevailing culture, um, there can be consequences or feared consequences which deter people from taking action. So uh, the report doesn't address any specific case. So we're yet to see whether there will be other specific cases brought, but at any time that can happen uh, into the future. Do you think it's acceptable, Josh, that uh, a club like Collingwood, on reading this very stark review, can say, OK, this is our stake in the ground moment, everything will be better from now, without actually addressing all of those issues from the past? No, I don't think um, an organisation that's well run or well managed will um, ultimately succeed in doing that. You can't just um, commission a report and say we're turning over a new leaf and all is all is well. Um, in order to, if you wanted to do this properly, then you need to, uh, I think, take action to ensure that this doesn't occur again. To, and as part of that, you need to ensure people are made accountable for what's gone on in the, pa in the past and a very clear message sent that people will be made accountable for anything, any repetition of this behaviour in the future. When you stuff up, um, you know, lawyers, lawyers are knocked out of the way when organisations admit stuffing up, publicly acknowledge it, seek to uh, remedy and rectify it, and then seek to ensure it never happens again. That, if that happens, if that happened in every workplace, I'd have nothing to do. The letter attributed to the 150 footballers and netballers of Collingwood starts with the word sorry and goes on to say players feel responsible for these injustices because they stayed quiet when they should have spoken up. It comes in the wake of that Do Better report that we have been discussing. How do you respond to that, Joel? Well, uh, what's the consequence from that? You know, sorry hasn't, uh, isn't any form of restitution. Sorry is not punishment. You can't get healthy from the same place you get sick. And we know who are making those very sick and we know who are being racist. So, um, look, there may be a sincerity, but they're putting that to the media. Have they put that to their hierarchy? Have they put that to Eddie? Have they put that to the coaches or those who are being racist? Uh, that would be really the best step forward and the apologies from my understanding amongst the black community um, are insufficient. 
All right, so from my part, I think it's interesting the players have said sorry. We still haven't heard that word specifically from management or the board. And uh, I, I just wonder whether there are legal implications for actually apologising, Josh, um, which is perhaps why we haven't heard it from elsewhere, the AFL included. Look, I actually don't think there are huge um, legal implications. At the moment, there's no particular case on foot um, uh, that I'm aware of. So perhaps um, if there was particular litigation on foot, then maybe there would be some reticence. I think, I think an apology from the players uh, may be uh, a step in the right direction, but there's a whole lot more that needs to happen. And as Joel's made clear, we need some real specific redress and specific accountability for the, the acts, the racist acts of the past. And that needs to be as public as the apology. All right, I'm going to come back to you, Joel. Um, whenever these conversations happen, we always approach players. We ask them to relive their experiences uh, so that we can understand what you've all been through. I'm not going to ask you to do that because you would think that by now, with the amount of information that is in the public sphere, that we might understand without having to ask you to go through that pain again. But um, do you think that adequate attention in moments like these is actually placed on the perpetrators of racism? Uh, no, definitely not. You can see right now Australia um, and the general public and the media is putting a lot of language around the report and the term systematic racism. But look, that's just uh, linguistics in the law. Uh, systematic is that doesn't mean there were robots or machines that did committed these racist acts and that sent these racist messages. Uh, these are human beings that were doing this, these are individuals. We know the AFL has basically done nothing. There was a small rebuke to Eddie and his choice of words in describing it as a proud day, the day that the report uh, was released or leaked because the club hasn't actually released it yet. Um, so I'm just wondering if it was described rather than racism but as something that was bringing the game into disrepute, would we have seen the AFL act quicker? Indeed, in other disciplines, uh, racist uh, behaviour can produce disciplinary charges of exactly that kind, of bringing, bringing the um, particular sport into disrepute. In fact, I, I seem to recall one such case involving a, a licensed person in a, a horse racing context. So, um, yes, uh, these matters could be the subject of disciplinary processes if there were proper rules in place and a determination to stamp the problem out. Um, you would then have public, public airing of the matter and you would find uh, that would um, have an effect as a deterrent to others. And I think it's an important part of uh, the AFL and AFL clubs moving forward, there does need to be um, some examples made um, of, of those who do perpetrate the acts and accountability being brought home. But whose responsibility is that to make it happen? Is, is that the commissioners of the AFL? Is it the board of Collingwood? Or mm. once again, is it up to the players who have suffered this racist abuse over a sustained period? In any, in any system, you could have a set of rules which uh, provide uh, for prescription against racism and or, uh, as, you, as you described it, bringing the sport into disrepute and those could be pursued by the relevant disciplinary body within the AFL. At the same time, Collingwood, as uh, the direct employer, could also and should also take disciplinary action uh, where racism is, is perpetrated within its own ranks. So it, it's, uh, it's a matter of policy about how you approach it, but both options are available and both actually can be pursued even at the same time. Joel Wilkinson, Josh Bornstein, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. That's the ticket for this week. I'm Tracy Holmes. You can find more on this issue and Joel's story on our website, abc.net.au slash news. And don't miss the ticket podcast out every week for an in-depth look at this and many other issues in the world of sport. Thanks for your company. See you next time.